It was really, and that, that's why I, my favorite martial arts team ever is DDS. Like I love watching the guys. Like honestly, like I know they're they're no more. For those of you who don't know, they they've dissipated. Maybe we could talk about that later. But the entertainment factor of watching them grapple. Like my favorite match of all time in jiu-jitsu is Gary Tonin versus Paul Harris. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I want to tell you something, guys. When they booked that match, I was seriously considering calling John and asking him to cancel that match. Why? I'll tell you why. <laughs> For those of you, you guys know Paul Harris. You're watching this, you should know Paul Harris. I felt he's a lunatic. He's going to miss weight. He's going to come on massive amounts of steroids. Not allegation, guys. He's been busted for steroids in the past. Am I right? We Correct. have scientific data, guys. The guy's been flagged for steroids. He's not going to make weight because there's no monetary incentive for him to make weight. And if he catches Gary's heel, which is not impossible. I know you guys are more sophisticated. There's a difference between being effective and being technical. But the man is incredibly effective. And if he catches Gordon's uh, Gary's heel, he'll cripple him. No matter even if the ref, even if he taps or the referee stops, tries to tries to stop the match, he'll cripple him. And I actually was like an inch away from calling you and asking you to try. Uh, uh, you, you didn't need to worry because about a dozen other people did call yeah, me I <laughs> and asked I me to cancel the fight. I, I remember um, uh, on like a Tuesday morning when G Gary's given the offer after class, I called Gary aside and I was like, Gary. Um, you know, you're talking about the match with Paul Yaris. Um, are you sure you want to do this? And he was like, absolutely. And I said, you know that this is going to be different from other fights. And he's like, yep. And I said, um, you know, if he catches you, <laughs> he'll break your leg. He'll, he'll There's no stopping. He'll try it. to break your leg. And for, for, Gary was just like, don't even, he, he said, if, if I don't go with this guy and beat him, no one's going to believe in our leg lock system. And uh, he just went out fearlessly and uh, dominated all the leg lock exchanges. Not only that, uh, Paul Harris was fading. Yeah. If there, if there, was, if there was, was no time limit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. If yeah. there was yeah. 10 minutes more, because yeah. he's a big guy. Like Gary was clearly winning the exchanges and it was getting more and more in Gary's favor. I, I argue, honestly, my favorite match of all time, I'll tell you why. I felt like the principles of Jiu Jitsu were on display. Literally, at one point, for those of you who haven't seen the match, you, you must watch. It's a must watch match. He literally, picture the Hulk grabbing a human being and throwing him, and Gary kind of rolls, hits the ground, and kind of yeah. rolls, and he's just back on him. And it was like Spider Man versus the Hulk. If I, I, always, can, if I, I can. Always, <laughs> um, What's uh, that? I always give my students um, a, a, a mental image that I want them to carry into every fight they go into. And the image that I gave Gary for that fight was the ball. Mm. He said, Pajaris is going to attack you like a pit bull. Mm. A pit bull can't damage a ball. He can't mm. get his mouth around it. And if he throws it up near, it just bounces. There are no edges. And when he got picked up, he just bounced like a ball. Rolling. I guess Pajaris would have crippled legs. him if he could. Oh, yeah. He's in, he's in that case. Like, uh, guys, I tell you, I, I mean, I have res uh, you know, we all, we all have respect. You, you want to beat your opponent, but you don't want to injure him. Pajaris would actively injure his opponents. I mean, that's the truth. I hate to say it, but... If you watch his fight with Jake Shields, I mean, you could tell like, what a ferocious guy he is. Yeah. Like, he's a, he's a violent human being. And I don't want to talk negative about him, but that's one reason why I really didn't want that match to happen, actually. I know, I know you must have got a lot of calls, but I was actually going to petition you not to let this fight happen. And uh, uh, one of the great things for us is that things that seem incredibly dangerous, if you know what you're doing, Mm -hmm. And you know where you're safe and where you're not safe. You can make things that seem incredibly dangerous to most people mm -hmm. seem quite innocuous. Mm -hmm. And as long as you keep your feet and hands and elbows and knees inside your opponents, you're never going to be in danger. And if you look at that match, that's exactly what Gary did. There was another DDS moment that was legendary. Keenan Cornelius versus Gordon Ryan. No time limit. Mm -hmm. You remember it's this? Going of, course back you a long this way, yeah. of course you remember yeah. this match. Where did it take place again? Was it in Canada? It, no, it was in New York City. New York City. Yeah. New York City? Downtown New York City. No time limit. Arguably one of the most technical grapplers at the time, Kenyon Cornelius, another legend in the sport. Taking on a young Gordon Ryan, which he wasn't black belt yet. No. What, what belt was he? I believe he was a recent brown belt. A recent brown belt. And Okay, John, sorry we got cut off because of a malfunction in the computer, but we're talking about Cornelius, Keenan Cornelius, never been defeated in a no time as a match match. Uh, a legend, probably pound for pound, one of the top five best grapplers at the time. 
going up against a young Gordon Ryan. Gordon Ryan at the time was a, probably a newly minted brown belt, roughly, yes. at that time. No time limits match. Leg locks allowed. New York City, what happened? Um, I remember before the match, talking to Gordon about it, he, he just had absolute confidence in his ability to win. And the idea that he would lose didn't even occur to him. Um, interestingly, Keenan came in with the similar levels of confidence. And those always make for interesting matches. Mm -hmm. when, when both guys mm -hmm. in, their, in their minds truly believe that they are unbeatable and that the, the athlete in front of them can never defeat them, you always get very interesting matches. And technically, this is still pretty early in Gordon's career, they were a match for each other for mm -hmm. the first hour. But somewhere at about the one hour mark. Mm -hmm. It was very back and forth the yes, first hour. Yes. You could clearly see Keenan develop the belief that he had no method of winning this fight. Now, ordinarily, in a normal match, if you believe I have no method of winning this fight, it's a simple matter of, okay, just go to the end and mm -hmm. lose a decision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you, you walk away with your pride intact. But a no time limit match is very, very different. When you start to believe in a no time limit match, I have no method of winning this fight, your morale just crashes. I remember you talking to me and George about this when we were younger. You kept telling us that in a no time limit match, you trust Hodger Gracie's Jiu Jitsu the most. This is way back in the day. And you used to tell us because defense was so important. You kept highlighting the importance of Hodger Gracie's ability. It's almost impossible to tap him. Like it's, he, he has that ability of, of uh, I don't know how you would call it. His, his defense is so it's, strong. He can be confident yeah. enough that he's going to win or he's going to draw. Like he can't lose. Yeah. Uh, I've said to, to this to you and George on so many occasions, the basis of your confidence in any match is directly proportional to your confidence in your defense. If you believe at any given moment you can lose a match, you're going to be nervous the whole fight. Mm. But if you walk in saying this guy has no method of beating me, then the only question in your mind is how long will it take you to win? Mm. That's the only question you have. At worst, you run out of time, but you can't get beat. Yeah, but in no time limit yeah. match. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. The DDS guys were so impossible to get subbed. Like it was so difficult. Like I think I, uh, I can remember only one, maybe one match coming to mind. Uh, I think it was when Gary subbed Eddie, and or Eddie got subbed once also in. Uh, uh, Eddie got caught in an overtime in right. an EBI and EBI. Uh, and of course, Gordon also. I mean, everybody gets caught sooner or later, but he he got caught by Pena yeah. or Nicky Choke. But it, it's going to happen. You're going to yeah, lose it's going to happen. Uh, obviously. It's but, like a boxer. You can have the best defensive skills in all time. Someone's going to find your chin at some point. With us, yeah, I trained us so much in control. With them, I felt like they had done so much more time in the submission, both defense and offense, because they were incredibly difficult to sub. Like we would start an armbar or on their back, like forget about it. They, they knew every nook and cranny how to get out. It, it, was, it was amazing. And uh, I think that's what you see in that match. Like Kenyon could pass his guard. He can take his side control on him. But so what? To what end? Yeah. To what end? Where does this, how does this, are we doing this forever, for eternity? But in their second match, actually, their second match was very different. Abu Dhabi. I thought shooting a double leg on Gordon was a horrible mistake. Yeah. A horrible mistake. But also understand the context of it. Gordon was a completely different athlete by then. Mm. Um, when I first taught the squad, I taught them control to submission. The first two athletes I took to ADCC were Eddie Cummings and Gary Tonin. They came in with the philosophy of control leading to submission. Now, in, in submission-only matches, EBI, that's the perfect philosophy. But ADCC is a completely different rule set. Mm -hmm. ADCC is essentially a merging of wrestling and jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. as opposed to a pure jiu-jitsu match like mm -hmm. EBI, where it's just about submitting people. Um, and Eddie won his first match with the fastest submission of the tournament. I think like, he beat some uh, Russian Sambo guy in like 15 seconds with a heel hook. Gary brilliantly won by leg lock against Dylan Danis, uh, his first match. So they both had brilliant yeah. wins in their first matches, but they both lost to experienced mm -hmm. Brazilians in their second match. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get out of the quarterfinals. And so when I left Brazil, I knew that what I had done with these talented young fellows was good enough for, for what they were competing in an EBI, 
but if they wanted to become legends, they had to go beyond control a submission game and add the idea of a pressure over time game. Mm -hmm. The Gordon Ryan who entered 2017 against Keenan Cornelius had pressure over time as newly built into him, a new kind of By pressure mindset. over time, you mean like? The ability to exert positional pressure over time that melts your opponent. It's almost like playing chess with that little clock. Mm. Now you, you have a certain amount of time. You're going to make a mistake because I'm pressuring you to make yes. a move right now. Yeah. And uh, there's two kinds of pressure that are most important. The first is physical and the second is time. And when you can get those two working in unison, you can melt a man inside of 10 minutes. And Keenan shot not because he wanted to, but because he had run out of other options mm. and walked right into a gear team that won the match. Um, uh, and so the modern squad is a mix of the old uh, submission <clears throat> rotation along with pressure over time. And we're trying to expand pressure from just ground and also into standing position. That's a continuing project as we speak. So um, uh, now you have a new terminology actually for it. Now we, you refer to it now as uh, scrimmage scrimmaging. Wrestling. Whereas yeah. before, when we were training, we were referred to it as situation, single leg situation, half guard situation. But now you added the the, the, the new rule set where we have to score points actually. Mm. So now we have a new terminology. Can you define scrimmaging? Like, yeah, yeah. The idea is that um, when most people talk about takedowns in jujitsu, they they use kind of like a what I call a bolt-on philosophy where they, they have their jiu-jitsu skills, which is mostly on the ground. And then when you're in a tournament where like ADCC, where you have to exhibit skills in a standing position as well, they go to a local wrestling club and they do some wrestling two months before the competition. And they, they take a few wrestling skills that they've learned in a couple of months and bolt them onto their jiu-jitsu game. And they hope for the best. You can do okay with that up to a certain level, but it's not the way that I encourage my athletes to think. I think that the standing game should be built into your jiu -jitsu game 365 days a year mm -hmm. rather than just something you and it must be tailored to the to the scoring criteria of jiu -jitsu. The scoring criteria for takedowns and wrestling is substantially different. The techniques are quite similar, but the scoring criteria the cardio is, is different. different I course. find the cardio is different. The card like I, I get more tired scrimmaging than wrestling. Yes. Because I feel like I have to go a little further than I'm used to. I'm used to take it down and relax. It's over. Yeah. And, Scramble and, is over. And, Start again. Yeah. And, and wrestling is a, a pretty short time frame between the beginning of the takedown and the end result. Yeah. And in, in jiu-jitsu, the scrambles can go on. For it goes on for an extra 10 time. seconds, but that 10 seconds could be hell. Yeah. And then there's no guarantee at the end of the 10 seconds because there's no referees. The guy's the frantic. The guy's frantic. He doesn't want that hook coming in. He doesn't want that pin. He doesn't want... It's, 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 it's an insane yeah. Yeah. level a, of energy being spent in a few seconds. It's a, it's a fascinating part of the game. And um, uh, you're starting to see it now with the, uh, the younger generation of ADCC athletes. They're exhibiting it very well.